There's a element of getting out of instructor mode when you're actually flying a plane again. When you're training, when you're the instructor, you're always judging and critiquing someone else's t technique, right? Right. And when you were training, you were always being critiqued and criti like, you know, yeah. that, that. So you always, you're like, oh, it was a bad landing. Like, it's all this judgment from what you do on a day to day basis. When really your job as a pilot was to get yourself safely on the ground. Did you do that? Yeah. Absolutely. You know, my IOE check, it's like the line check or LOE. Okay. Like, online, my last check with the, with the pilot, he has to sign off. And once he signs off, I'm online and I'm good to go. And he's like, you know, this is your line check. I said, yeah, yeah. He's like, all right, well, uh, just make sure you don't float it, right? And that I smashed sense. the thousands, and I smashed the thousands. Like, yeah. I hit really hard. I was like, that was the worst landing ever. He's like, dude, I'd rather you done that than float. I was okay. like, okay, fine then. Okay. <laughs> Fair enough. So. That's so true. a different way of looking at it. Because on the way home, I was like, I don't even know why that affected me so much. Like, yeah. I couldn't even understand it. And you hold yourself to a high standard. Will you get our mag? Absolutely, left mag, right mag. Let's just have go have some fun. It's also a little bit of like changing our relationship for me being your instructor. Obviously, it's still kind of a role of that, but it's yeah. it's more like, hey, let's go have fun as pilots. Well, you know? that's so exciting because it's like I don't have to pass a check ride, so no, now I can exactly. like fully learn in a relaxed environment. Yeah, and I don't have to teach to a check ride. I'm like, yeah, oh. that it feels cool. Yeah. Greeley, traffic back to and Victor taking off runway 35. Greeley, please stay in the uh, pattern. Let's go north. Let's just okay. head, head out. North, northwest. Really well, I like flying towards the mountains. Seven, runway, it makes me five, happier. Five, I know. I got to go to Laramie today, and my student was in Foggles, but I was just loving the view. <laughs> but this feels so unfair. That's awesome. I also it feels like getting back to the airport's a little bit easier from the northwest because you get that tailwind. Really? Every time I go that way, it's yeah. like forever to get back to the airport once you decide. Go right on the downwind. Yeah. We're six. We're on a six-mile final. We're doing a touch and go. Greeley traffic. All right, here we go. Traffic Skyhawk 2 1 Victor, departure lake 35, departing to the northwest, really. So, do you say 85 in, in here or do you go for the 83? I do 80. 80? Because it's 80 to 85. Oh, because it gives you the range. What, what's really the goal there, right? What's, what's, what's the goal of the number you're picking? It, it's so you get the best rate of climb, right. right? So is 80 going to give you the best rate or is 85 give you the best rate? It's one of those things where we almost have to go out and test it. Yeah, and be like, what is the true. actual number? Or do we say, hey, we're lighter today. We're low on fuel and you and I don't, don't weigh that much. So 80 is more appropriate. Okay. And whereas if it's full fuel and heavy, let's use 85, right? Okay. It's harder to get to 85 when you're heavy. Yeah. When you're light like us, 85 is easy. So it's all these different variables that I think we're going to have to work through. And that's part of coming up with you guys is like sorting that out a little bit. Yeah, that would be uh, cool to all be on the same page yeah. and say the same things. Because that's another thing on landings. For miles per hour, I do 85, 80 on uh, the base, and then 75 for final approach. Okay. I guess when we go back and practice do some landings, we can kind of look at where those numbers, like what's the goal of those numbers? What, where, what, why do you pick the number you're going to pick? what you'll know. Right. Because right now you kind of have a lack of information. You just haven't done it long enough to be like, okay, I've had this student and they can't do it this way. Why can't they do it this way? The real goal of those different numbers is so that when you go power back, flaps down and trim it for the first airspeed, the next air yeah. speeds will decrease based on the amount of flaps you use. Yeah. So 20 degrees will slow you down to whatever number that is. You're not asking them to make major pitch changes in that right. moment. Um, and then 30 degrees will change it down to the, the final approach speed. Um, I'm not changing okay. saying it's going to change the pressure required. I'm saying it's going to keep the pitch attitude the same so that their goal, where their eyes should be, is going to be fairly yeah. consistent, right? Will yeah. you take controls? My flight controls. Your flight controls. I want to write that down because I have a student who pitches way too much. 
for the airspeed, but yeah. that makes sense because that's how I, yeah. like, that's all I'm teaching them without the flaps information. Sure. Yeah, yeah. If you make the speed that the goal right away, they're going to over control. If you right. say the airspeed will come in when, with the flaps, like they go in hand in hand. Um, That's helpful. Yeah. Sweet. Okay. Uh, again, to kind of just keep me on the same page if you're not feeling good, because okay. you know, we can get Yankee and Banky in these planes, especially when I'm not training. Um, <laughs> going through a little bit of a stall sequence then, okay? Power on stalls are kind of what I'm thinking okay. with first, okay? Yeah, let's do so, it. So, just to reiterate the fact of the amount you pitch up for the stall correlates to how much you're going to have to decrease the pitch to recover, okay? Great. So, for, say, uh, uh, aggressive stalls where I'm going to start just because I'm already going really fast, okay? So, we go for a power on stall. We start pitching up the nose with a lot of airspeed. We're going to be able to pitch up pretty aggressively in this stall, right? Yeah. And if I hold this pitch attitude, right, it stalls, I have to do this not spin right to recover wow. right yep. and you'll see oh now i'm like hauling ass at the ground i still overall gained a little bit of yeah. altitude but can you imagine what the student would do say if they did that and then they were close to the ground yeah. in real life they're going to end up yanking on the yoke at the end because yeah. the ground's going to be right there and then they're going to accelerate stall so the difference would be hey let's go and bring the power back a little bit i'm going to hold off on the car p for now i'm not too worried about shot cooling or car bias. I also do not care about the altitude when we're together. Yeah. Um, but normally I'd have the student maintain the altitude through okay. the, dis the the slowdown process. So if I slow down to say 73 miles per hour, which you'd say is a VX airspeed, and then right. I pitch the nose up just ever so gradual. And I'm gonna pick maybe right about there. I'm kind of referencing a cloud in my mind. I'll have a cloud okay. in sight. I'm just going to hold this here, and it's going to take a lot longer for the stall to occur. But once I do recover, all right, we're getting to the stall. There's the stall. You notice how I can just lower the nose a little bit, and now I'm flying yeah. again, right? So there's like this real clear direct correlation to the pitch up, pitch out. I want you to go through both of those. I, yeah, I would love to be able to show my students that. I don't know if I can do an aggressive stall oh, like so, that. So, so, so I'll be with you. That. If you enter a spin, no worries. We have lots of altitude here. Okay. Um, and if you do start rotating your flight controls, if my you do start controls. rotating and not unable to control, just shove the nose okay. down. I was kind of controlling the nose. Yeah. But really, you can just shove it. And if we make a rotation in it, whatever. Okay. Um, Cool. We have lots of airspeed. So here, it's just like, if you want to, which one do you want to do first, I guess, is the question. The power, the aggressive one? The aggressive one. Okay. So you kind of keep your speed up for the aggressive one. You oh, shove oh, oh, all okay. the power in, okay. and then you just pitch, pitch that nose okay. on up. All right. And this zone is perfect okay. right here. And then you're going to have to really increase that back pressure. Boom. And now lowering that nose. Beautiful. Right, Ryder, you got it. Nice. It's so hard not to put the ailerons in. <laughs> did I do aileron a little no, bit? No, no, you oh, didn't. Okay, no, okay. no, you did a great job is kind of what I'm saying. Okay. Uh, beautiful, beautiful. It's just in those moments where it's like you feel it starting oh, right. to like do it. It's like, oh, don't do the ailerons. I might have done the ailerons. So now slow down first. Okay. Which is, the, again, the way I would probably have students do it more so. Um, unless yeah, they that's how I teach the power when we slowed it. Yeah. Rotate speed. Rotate speed. That 55. works too. Yeah, that, that's totally over rotating is a great way to teach it also. Just simulating. Okay, so is that. This is great. Yeah, anywhere in this range, okay. we can use 70, 65, wherever you want. Beautiful. And then here it's. Like that high? As you're, as you're probably used to. So you want to maintain the speed first. You're essentially getting yourself <gasps> oh, into that oh, climb pitch attitude, I want to try right? That again. Okay. And that way you're stable. You're, you're using a sight picture. They're using a sight picture that they're okay. familiar with, right? They've climbed out from the airport, hopefully, a few times. Okay, I'm just going to do 65 knots. Okay. Right on. Stable, stable. And once you feel stable, you're like, okay, this is what it looks like. I would go up maybe another, I don't, I don't know. You see that line of white cloud? That's yeah. where I would go up like to that. about that, yeah. And you'll notice as you start bleeding off that speed, beautiful, you'll have to increase the bite back pressure. Yeah. And it will stall eventually. 
Boom, and then you recover, you just lower it just slightly below or at the horizon and immediately That's flying That's so again. crazy. And you'll see you're still descending in this moment, but really it's 20 feet. Okay. Beautiful. That's oh, how I, I, I want to teach it that way, like show them both. Yeah, well, I think it's super important. Well, they're going to do the other way too. <laughs> they're going to forget either to slow down. And this is what, again, what I see on mock check rides and pre-solo checks is the first one. Okay. I'm like, whoa, okay, well, this is going to be fun. Yeah. Because they're not going to control it, right? Yeah. Uh, um, and they're like, what happened there? Oh, I never slowed down. So that's power okay. on stall, power off stall. Um, and this is where I'm going to kind of get into the falling leaf aspect. It works the exact same. But so for power off stall, let me demo. My yep, flight controls. Yep, flight controls. Um, we're going to go this way real quick. A little bit of clearing turn. We'll use a road as some guidance. Okay, so we'll slow down here. Car repeats on. The wide arc flaps 10 degrees. I have a question about power on stalls. Do you teach your students? Should I teach them to use car repeat? I don't for that short duration. Okay. I, I think it's uh, too many actions and they're going to get too far behind the aircraft doing it in that manner. For power off stalls, I think in landing configuration, whatever you usually use for that. So here we're going to go 70 miles per hour, 60 knots. Okay. I'm sure you can't see the miles per hour. Uh, yeah, I'm watching the knots. Cool. So 1700 uh, set up and you'll see what type of descent. I'm not really going to point that out to them. It's mostly I want you here and here. Okay, okay we're like there. That. We're going to actually go power idle and pitch the nose up and I just go a little bit above the horizon and from here once we stall what I would, I'm gonna do it to you as a falling leaf stall so once you stall I'm just gonna hold the back pressure I'm gonna use whatever rudder pressure is necessary to keep the sucker going somewhat eastbound this makes sense? Yeah. So we're descending it's at 800 feet. It's weird to even feet, descending. It's right? hard to tell that, yeah. Yeah. I, I don't have any control here, really. Okay. Right? And then I relax the back pressure and immediately I'm flying again. So that is a way of showing, like, you do have some control when you're yeah. stalled. So thinking about, like, this short field landing, when, you, when you're going that slow, how slow we'll end up doing it today. Yep. Um, you have a lot of ability to get yourself out of that scenario pretty easily with power and car feet off and relaxing yeah. the back pressure. What's the danger? The danger is wind shear. So I'm not oh. going super slow on a wind sheary day, or if I am, right. I'm going to use the standard add half the gust factor to the final approach speed and use that. But that's going to limit your ability to get into any runway, regardless of, you know, regardless. Yeah. So. Um, for me, that slower airspeed is a technique on the appropriate day is, I guess, a way of putting that. I guess I can just clean. Okay. Makes sense? I'll head yeah. the flight controls My back flight over to controls. you. And I just have us climbing. Once you're ready, you can level us off. And for um, the setup, they still need to, like, maintain level on the slowing down and then descent, basically. Is it a... Can um, you still teach it that way? I do teach level okay. until you hit the speed once and you're at the speed. Yeah, absolutely. Okay,